No, I'm not doing the intro today. It's too serious. I'm not mucking around. Listen, people out there in YouTube land that write ridiculous things in the comments. Last night on Monday Night Raw, I was told that Rey Mysterio was going to retire. For seven days, WW promoted this. I was very confused that his arch nemesis, Seth Rollins, would be the person doing the retiring, but I shed tears. I didn't eat any food. I didn't see any of my friends and family. I could barely look at myself in the mirror because my favorite wrestler, who yes, is Rey Mysterio, was calling it a day. And not because he wanted to call it a day, but because somebody had stabbed him in his eye. Then I turn on the USA Network, and what do I see? I find out that it's all a ruse. And you may now be saying, well, flip it. You should have picked up on this. But my big question is this. If Rey Mysterio knew he wasn't going to hang up his boots, why didn't he do a tweet? Why didn't he do a Facebook? Why didn't he do an Instagram? Why didn't he do a tout? I thought he was meant to be a good person. I thought he was meant to be somebody we could root behind. I thought he was meant to be a hero. I was also told that apparently he's the mentor of Alistair Black, which has never been brought up. Not once. Not once. It's a very sad times here on Kayfabe News. So I decided to put on my investigatory hat and go and document other instances of this happening. And you will be shocked to your core. We will start with Terence Funk, also known as Terry Funk. He first retired in the year 1983. 1983! And I know that my granddad, Flippin' Flippin' Marks, was probably watching this with as much sadness as I was when it came to Rey Mysterio. And do you know what Terence Funk did seven days later? He had a wrestling match. Then he was wrestling in ECW in the late 90s. He was back in the WWF in the 2000s. It was all a ruse. It was all a lie. And I want to know why wrestlers think they can keep getting away with this. It's because of people like you. You don't hold them to task like I do. It is pathetic. Then there's Rickles Flair. Rickles the Nature Boy Flair. I was in attendance at WrestleMania 24 where Shawn Michaels looked at his fake dad and said, I love you, and that he was sorry before he kicked him in the chin and basically took him out to pasture and shot him in the head. I thought that was it for, da for, for, for Ric Flair. Do you remember the song, Leave the Memories Alone? You shed a tear every single damn time, and then he turned up in TNA. TNA Tits and Ass, which is a terrible name for a wrestling promotion to begin with. He got a special watch from the Heartbreak Kid, if that is his real name, and he spat on the memory of this watch by performing in that low rent organization which doesn't even exist anymore. It's not even around. If you retire, if I retire right now, do you expect to tune in tomorrow and see me? Maybe you do, but I'm flipping marks. I can do whatever I want. Ric Flair, the so-called nature boy, whatever that means, I don't see any trees or bushes on him. If he says he's calling it a day, that's what I expect. Next, you'll be telling me the wrestling matches are predetermined. Now, let's go back to the summer of 2013. I was watching Monday Night Raw like I've done every week since the day I popped out of my mother's womb and out sauntered Mark Henry wearing a salmon jacket to tell me, surprise, surprise, that he was going to retire. John Cena knew how upsetting this was and he went down to try and shake the man's hand and say, thank you, world's strongest man. You've been so world and you've been so strong and you've been such a man and now I will say fare thee well. But as it turned out, it was nothing more, again, than a dirty lie. Mark Henry wasn't retiring. He had no interest in retiring. He wanted to lure John Cena, the man who can't be seen apart from 100% of the population, that can see John Cena and beat him up so he could try and win some kind of world championship. What has happened to decency? What has happened to truth? What has happened to honor? What has happened to respect? If I ever now bump into Mark Henry and I need somebody to do me a favor, I can't trust him. I can't trust him at all because he lied to me about retiring almost a decade ago. You can't see it because I had my tear ducts removed, but I'm crying. Finally, we have Michael Foley. Michael Foley, who has been on this show before, where we exposed his deceit then, and yet there was more of this. You remember, he had a match at a pay-per-view called No Way Out against Triple H, the game, Hunter Hearst Helmsley. Used to be a blue blood, like a rich guy, then became some kind of cerebral assassin. It was a very strange evolution. That was part of a group he was in. I was still trying to catch up. But it, the rules were, if he wasn't able to win in the Hell in a Cell, he would no longer allowed to be wrestling for World Wrestling Entertainment. Then what happened a couple of months later at WrestleMania? He just walked on in and he had a match with World Wrestling Entertainment. And it was a four-way match. And he didn't even do that well. 
He was in the match for around about three minutes. What a waste of life. I mean, why are we even bothering? Why are we even bothering? I should just tell you, hey, you've won a million dollars. And then when you come to my door, I punch you in the face. That's the equivalent. I punch you dead in the face and you just have to deal with it. Ray Flippin Mysterio. If I ever meet you, Ray Mysterio, now I'm going to remove your mask and I am going to put it on my own face. And you want to know why? Because I know how much your mask means to you. And if you're going to disrespect me, I'll disrespect you too. Seven days, Ray. Seven days. What did I tell you? I mean, this isn't Rey Mysterio's mask. I didn't just go and hunt down Rey Mysterio and beat him up, but I will disrespect, disrespect him as he disrespected me. By the way, I swear on Raw, Bobby Lashley put Drew McIntyre in an unbreakable hold. And given that the show just went off air, I can only presume that Drew McIntyre is still in that hold. So we hope he's okay. And for some reason, the wrestling community went nuts over the fact that the Nia Jax was taken on Kairi Sane and threw her too hard into the still steps. What do, you, what do you think you're watching? You buffoons, you morons, you poindexters. It's wrestling, it's fighting. The whole point was that Nia Jax was trying to injure her opponent or wear her down or put her in enough pain so that she could pin her in the middle of the ring and that's what she did. I mean, it's, it, it beggars belief. It beggars belief. Do you not understand? What, what do you want them to do? Kiss? Have some tea? Sit down and, and hug some teddy bears? You're all a bunch of jokes. No one is a bigger joke than Rey Mysterio this week. Absolutely nobody. Also, we saw a bowling contest. I don't understand why either. I mean, there was a, a just an absolute ignorance of the rules. The, the Viking Raiders, or whatever the hell they're called, threw one of them down the bowling lane like, that's okay. Raw was very weird this week. It annoyed me. It annoyed me at an almost unnecessary degree. And also, Kevin Owens got a title shot even though he lost last week. What is the point? Wins, losses, none of it matters. None of it matters. And I'm, I'm sick and tired. I'm done with it. I'm done with Raw. And I'm never going to watch it again until Monday at 8 p.m. Now look, you idiots, make it up to me by liking the video, sharing this video, and subscribing to Kayfabe News. No one else is reviewing Raw like I'm doing it. They all come up with these weird analogies and these weird things they think they know, but they don't. I watch it, I tell the truth. My name is Flippin' Marks. And look, go watch other videos here on, on Kayfabe News, because you're not doing anything else apart from going on that there Reddit. I've seen Reddit. You all go on there and you all bitch and moan. Never hear me bitching and moaning. Unbelievable.